Hello and welcome to the Motorcycle.com Middle Week Naked Shootout for 2021. I brought the kids out for a ride, Troy and Ryan. They were getting kind of rambunctious around the house. Sure. Uh, I think the last time we did this was 2017. Kind of a different cast of characters there. We, we had a Harley Davidson street rod that, that no longer exists. Uh, there, there was some, something else too. It was a Benelli TNT 660 finished kind of kind of down the rankings mm. too. But uh, the bike that won that one was the Yamaha FZ07 because it was 2017. In 2018, it got a little bit of a, a refresh and became the MT07 that uh, did quite well. Uh, we have a new player in the Triumph Trident, which is new for 2021. And uh, don't give us a hard time if we leave some stuff out because you can go back to motorcycle.com and read the full test of this is already posted on there for quite some time. Like, also, I the MT07. You wrote that, didn't you? I believe I did. It's and there is a complete test of the Aprilia. Tuono 660. The Tuono yeah. 660 by, by Ryan Adams. So these have already been extensively tested, reported upon, specifications, all that are already there. This is a, the comparison portion of the thing, uh, which we brought out six bikes actually to compare. Six entered, three survived. Six entered, <laughs> we got three of them out here today. We, we, we rode the same route route on, on a, a bunch of different days. Well, let's be sure to name all six bikes. We've already named these three, the Yamaha, the Triumph, and the Aprilia. So what do we leave at home? So the dearly missed bikes that aren't here today are the Honda CB650R, Kawasaki Z650, and the Suzuki SV650. Well, it pains me to say the Suzuki is not here right now, because as you all know, as a SV650 owner, I dearly love that motorcycle, but time moves on, bikes get better, and that the one just Suzuki didn't make the cut. Just didn't move on though much, did it? <laughs> I mean, it's time always been a great on. bike and it, it continues to be a great bike, but it's kind of dated. So it is, it is. That engine is 20 years old and it's still a really good engine in my opinion. Um, I agree. But yes, I agree that the rest of it's a little bit, um, What's the word? Old? Long in the tooth. Long in the Probably tooth. Long in the tooth. <laughs> yeah. It still, still works great. And I, I think I'm going to take this time to say these are all great motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, it's true. They're all about the seven or eight or nine thousand dollar range. Except this all, one. They're Except all the really good, good motorcycles. Yeah. They're all really good motorcycles, I think. They are really good motorcycles. I mean, if you, if you can only have one, I mean, a middleweight naked is probably one of them I would buy if they took all the other ones away. And I, I will we'll get to which one later. But the SV650 finished on the bottom. Which one finished fifth? By like a point over the SV was the Kawasaki. Uh, the Z650, and it's really a sweet little bike, I think. I I'd have ranked it, I think I did rank it above the Honda, but we tend to disagree a little bit here and there. But uh, the Z650, I think if you're a, a smaller, a smaller human being, you're gonna like that one. I can touch both of my 30 inch legs flat on the, on the ground on that one. It only weighs 4012, 4, 412, 4, 12, 412 pounds. It's really light. It's got the got the lightest springs and damping. But um, and on back roads though, even with my 180 pounds of flesh before I put on gear, I was having fun riding the thing. It's kind of springy and bouncy, but it turns so quick and it's got such a spunky little motor. I love that bike. Uh, yes, I agree, John. The uh, the Kawasaki does does have a fun little engine. That parallel twin. That sound it makes with its conventional firing order isn't the most exciting sound in the world, but it is small, it is compact, and if you're a smaller person, yeah. smaller rider, maybe concerned with touching the ground, yeah. that is an excellent bike to start on. It's very compact too, so if, if you're worried about, you know, just having a bigger motorcycle, that's yeah. a good place to start. Yeah, um, yeah and it is light and flickable, and it you can toss it around where you want to go. You know, once you start pushing it on some really crappy roads like we've been riding on here. It, it does kind of protest a little bit. You get some weird sensations and weird vibrations, yeah. but uh, what are you gonna do? you're probably not gonna be mashing any of these bikes on twisty, curvy roads like this, and at least not super hard anyway. Yeah. There's better bikes for that. I think it, it depends on how fast the twisty, curvy road is. Because if you took that into the to Latigo Canyon, some of the real tight ones in, up in Malibu, that might be one of the fastest ways to get around there. Like the Honda Hawk GT used to be, little 640cc twin. Could be, beat super bikes on that thing. 
on really tight twisty roads. You know what roads. bike made that Honda Hawk obsolete? SV650, was it? right. All right, all right. All right. Mac, next, moving on. That was a long time ago. <laughs> 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 moving on, what's the next one? That was the, the, that was the 90s. Uh, the, third, the fourth place finisher was the Honda CB650R, I believe, is that right? Ryan's favorite motorcycle. Ryan Why ran, is that? ranked it higher than the rest of us. Well, there are some things about the Honda that it does really, really good and much better than the rest of these bikes. I, I think, think. Could be the right. slipper clutch and the pull at the clutch lever is incredibly light. You can bang down through the entire gearbox and let the clutch out and you might get it to, well, Troy got it to lock up the rear tire. I actually he, didn't. Because he hates transmissions. It looks great and the, the finish of it, it uh, feels a lot more like mature than like the Cowie or the Yamaha. The Honda just has a color palette that, you know, you've got this like matte black and magnesium and like it just is a really cool bike and it keeps it in line with the whole Neo Sports Cafe lineup from Honda. The motor is sewing machine smooth around town. It doesn't have the punchy torque that basically every other bike here offers. And the suspension is pretty good, you know. I think it holds it up uh, pretty nicely in, compared to everything in this group, despite the fact that it's 42 pounds heavier than the lightest bike at 443 pounds. It's the heaviest bike here by a decent amount. Um, but it's in line four really, I think where it where it starts to become, you know, a bit of a problem is when we were out riding on our first testing days. You know, we're out here riding all these bikes. Oh, so you mean riding the bike is where it falls nah, short? Around town, <laughs> the thing's great. It's It's got a more open cockpit than anything else here. It's got big wide handlebars. It feels like a bigger motorcycle. So if you're a bigger person, it's probably the best one here. Um, but yeah, it makes the meat of its power between like 10,000 RPM and 13.5, which is higher than the red line on most of the bikes here. You so you, it, it feels red. like, yeah, you're, you're kind of in this manic uh, spot to really dip into its power. And what it's the second power, most powerful bike here, I think, right? Only because it revs so high. Because it revs out yeah. way higher. But, uh, but yeah. even when it gets all the way up to, up, up to its power peak, it only makes like, like 82 horsepower, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Which is, it's, it's enough, but if you have that kind of power, you kind of want one, a, a thumpy twin that is real torquey in the mid range too. And the Honda can't, can't, can't quite achieve that. Yeah, that first day we rode, we were on some pretty fast roads trying to keep up with each other, and it just feels kind of flat in, in the mid range. Definitely. It doesn't really do anything when you get to eight or 9,000 RPM. Yeah. But it, it's true, like you said, if you want a bike to ride around town, then, then I, I rode the thing down the freeway home and came back the next day. And, it, and it's, a, it's a nice motorcycle there. It's a perfectly nice bike there. And it feels pl plenty torquey when you're just riding around. Yeah. It's just when you're trying to chase the Aprilia down <laughs> a long straight that is kind of doesn't quite have the grunt that yeah. you want. The, the irony there is both the Honda and the Aprilia make their torque super high in the revs yeah. that and they've got, got pretty, nothing in the mid range. That's pretty, yeah, I shouldn't have said chasing well, the You Aprilia, picked the wrong bike. Because you can stay up with the Aprilia. <laughs> But you have a hard time staying up with the MT and with, and with the Triumph. Well, and then there's also the fact that when you are up in the meat of its of its power, and really, honestly, after like 5,000 RPM, it starts to get really buzzy. And it just, just gets buzz. worse as you get closer to that, that power. And so if you're out here revving that bike out, you know, chasing your friends, your hands and feet are probably going to be numb. And it's, and it's a really high-pitched vibration yeah, from that motor. Start to get, get, get the carpal tunnel. Well, in my opinion, the Honda... The Honda's saving grace, its redeeming quality is its chassis and suspension. It's true. It's, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's really a, good. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice motorcycle. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the it's second most expensive. 9200 bucks. yeah. 9200 dollars. But that engine is really... You can turn um, traction control yeah. on and off with a button on the fly on the switch gear. Which is ironic because you don't make any power until way <laughs> yeah. up high anyway, so yeah. you're not going to spin the tires up or mm -hmm. tire up. But but you could. Mm -hmm. You guess you could if you dump mm -hmm. the clutch or Who's something. Who's next? Who's next? Anyway, enough so about those that. are the next. those are the those are the three that that didn't make make the final the final three. These three are the ones that did make the final three. Which one finished third of these? And in third, we've got the Yamaha MT07. MT07. Mm. Which, as I said before, was the bike that, that, that won this thing in 2017. They got overalled in 2018. They put a, a wider, thicker seat on it. So uh, I think the, for getting back and forth to our nice roads on the beautiful Southern California free, freeway system, I think I like the Yamaha better than any of them. Seems to have the smoothest ride. 
the nicest, comfiest seat. And if we're talking middleweight naked bikes, I think the comfort and the ergonomics are a pretty important factor too. That one, that one seems to run smoother than in any of the other ones in cruise mode. It's doing like 6,000 RPM at 80, 85-ish miles an hour. Uh, if it had cruise control, it'd be, be a winner almost, but it does not. <laughs> So Ryan hates the MTS. <laughs> There's come? a lot that I don't How like. Come? So it's kind of like the opposite of the Honda for me, because I like a lot about the Honda and where it, it gives up. You know where it, where it kind of can be a little bit of a bummer is out here when you have to ring it out to ride it. Whereas the MTS Seven, the motor is the star of the show in that thing. It's so torquey. You have you know that pull any time in the rpm range you have power to shoot out of a corner or from a stoplight or whatever but overall this bike feels very cheap to me like i don't want to say everything but there's a lot of components and the way the suspension works it all just feels cheaper to me than most of the bikes in this comparison and the lack of a slipper clutch you know the only other bike is the sv650 which i can almost forgive them because the bike is the same that it's always been has been basically um but i feel like yamaha you know should have put a slipper clutch on this thing and and honestly it's it's kind of you know if for like a new rider it's kind of a harder bike to ride because you know it's so torquey i've heard stories of people looping these things out that you know maybe they should have gotten a smaller bike in the first place but also not having that slipper clutch it just adds a lot for like a newer rider to have to smooth things out but i'd really like it the center right I really like it for the motor for what it is. It doesn't do anything for me. This is a good I time. Know. This is a good time to mention the the dynograph for these bikes. So All gonna, these bikes we're dealing with there. about 70 to 85 ish horsepower and right. about 40 to 50 pound feet of torque. Mm -hmm. But you look at the dynograph and you look at the Yamaha's torque. Mm -hmm. It's head and shoulders above the whole time. <laughs> All the other bikes. Yeah. I think up makes... until it's redline. Right. Just night and day difference between the Yamaha's torque curve and everyone else. I mm -hmm. think it makes uh, 48 foot pounds peak. Is that like all the others idle. make. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's like ridiculous how much power. 42 for most of the others, around 40, 42 for the others. So. Like the yeah, it to takes me, off. To me, like the Yamaha is the definition of usable power. Totally. So and it's, it's out in tight canyon roads, yeah. it's around town, you know, yeah, it's, it's really awesome. And so that's a huge, huge highlight to me. And I totally get, you know, if you are a newer, inexperienced rider, how y you could whiskey throttle it and loop yourself. <laughs> I, I get that. However, for us, with a little bit more experience under our belts and with the knowledge not to loop it like that, uh, that motor is an absolute gem. Totally. The motor is a gym, and as far as it looking cheap, I, I I just I have to disagree with you there. I think it I think it looks good. I, I like the way it looks. The, the I mean, most. they've got those little plastic covers over the top of the conventional. That fork. makes it look like an inverted fork. Come on, <laughs> exactly. That's cool. That's cool. I think that there are things about it that you know, like compare that to the Trident. We're not getting there. There are, we're, there we're are things. There. Well, this is a comparison, so I, I'm not just talking about how like. I don't like the, the Yamaha. There are things that I don't like about it. There are things that I really like about it. But in comparison to this group of motorcycles, uh, there are some things, you know, suspension, uh, lack of a slipper clutch, some parts feel cheap, you know, that, that put it down the list for me. For me, like just thinking about it without consulting the scorecard, it's kind of like it it kind of ties for the Cowie for me because I think the Kawasaki looks, feels really good. It's got that nice TFT display. The, it's really smooth on the freeway again at 80. There's no vibration at all. Yeah. The only thing about that one is for me, we're all 5'8". So we're basically like, that's we're a great bike. Size. You can get your feet on the ground. <laughs> but for me, riding the Cowie on the freeway, it kind of bends my lit, my knee a little bit more. So I'd want to get the taller Kawasaki you know, seat that you can put on it. But so those are kind of neck and neck for me for third, you know, just not uh, not considering the scorecard and what would happen there. So where do we go into the second position for these? Here we go. Here's where it gets juicy. Ooh, it's getting juicy. And in the number two position, we pick the... Who's going to say it? Me? We I... have the Aprilia Tuono 660. Ooh. Maybe a little bit of a shocker? A little bit of surprise for some yeah, people? Yeah, I was surprised. Um, I think certain people really marked down the Yamaha, gave it low marks because 
on, on my scorecard, the Yamaha finished second. Which, hmm. where did it finish on your scorecard? Third. Third? All right, you picked the Aprilia second place too? Second place Aprilia, All right. All which... Right. I right, did too. But, you know, I mean, we don't need to get into how our scorecard oh, works necessarily do. here. <laughs> because you could go to motorcycle.com and check out the scorecard yeah, there. and see how the individuals ranked. What do we think, uh, we you go. know, really a, a catapulted the Aprilia into the second spot? Here we go. So, the Aprilia leaps into its second place position on the virtue of its really good looks. Absolutely. It looks awesome. It looks nice. It does make the most power. It has the best electronics, which really is insane a lot in this crowd. Well, yeah, but the, the thing is, it has the best electronics, but they're more on par with much, much more expensive motorcycles. Sure, <laughs> sure. And so there are some objective factors here that we couldn't give it demerit points for that ultimately catapulted it ahead of some other bikes in this group. Um, that all being said, riding it, like we talked about with some other bikes, you're searching for torque until it really starts to spin up. Then it'll, then it'll go, it'll go like hell. But again, I mean, you know, thinking about it, like where are you riding it the most? Because if you're out here riding it with your friends, which maybe you are with this bike, it looks sporty, sure. you get it because it's the sporty, uh, most technologically advanced motorcycle here. So maybe you are out riding it mostly out here where it has that flat spot in the mid range. But if you're around town, if you're mostly commuting and, and doing something like that, it's got the torque, kind of like the Honda, you know, it's got the power that's usable around town. It's not super punchy like the Yamaha or the Kawasaki. Um, or the but, SV. Or the SV. Or the Triumph. I can't leave that out. Or any other any, bike Any other here. bike, totally, yeah, yeah. The <laughs> Honda and the Aprilia have this you know, this mid-range that is just kind of dead. But around town, it's it's really not missed for me. Well, sure, like, is it usable? Sure, I guess so. Until you ride these other ones and realize, dang, these other ones have much better mid-range power than either the Aprilia or the Honda. Totally. So <laughs> yeah, a judge on itself, sure, it's fine. But that's well, the whole so, reason why we're so doing much here. judging on itself, but ju what are you gonna do with it? That's what you need to decide, because if you're, you know, if you're out here chasing your friends, then yeah, you're you're gonna be bummed out of every corner when you go to hit the gas and you're waiting for the unless, power to get back. Unless your butt is on the Honda, then your butt's gonna be waiting for power. Exactly. Then you're fine. <laughs> well, I mean, it says it says be be a racer on the front fender. It says be when a you racer. turn on the ignition, you get that on the on the TFT screen also. Be a racer. So it's the one that wants to be the race bike out so of all. So you want to keep it up in the air. If you want to be the next Valentino Rossi, that's the one the one you want. But it has a couple glaring issues, like the big, uh, the big kind of flat spot in the torque. That once you get past there, it tears out like crazy, and you think, "Oh man, I'm I'm flying now," and you feel pretty good. And then you look in the mirror, and the MT-07 and the Triumph are right right behind you. <laughs> so I mean, you know why? Because it has usable torque. Yeah, because they both got usable go. torque. But um, yeah, I mean, but if if you're kind of into that, I want to be a road racer when I grow up. It's it's it's, it's the bike. It sounds cool. great. It has, it has a quick shifter that was optional. It didn't so it's really 200 come bucks, it. yeah. You know. And it has, uh, what's the, the other IMU. option? IMU. It has the IMU. So I, the bending I lights think, into the corner. Yeah, yeah. Which is, it, 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 it's nice to have the lean sensitive ABS. But right. most of these bikes don't really need traction control. In, in, in my book, if you ride in the rain a lot, it's great to have. But for us in California, it's always dry. So I don't really even, even require that, but it's there. Well, and that's nice kind of the it. thing. Like that electronics package is, is stellar, and it's you know pretty close to what mm -hmm. the Tuono like last year the big Tuono had. Yeah. Um, but then yeah, it starts making you wonder: Do I need to do change I, all the parameters I don't, of I don't have engine braking, throttle mapping, yeah. T multiple levels of TC? Like, do do you really need that on well, that? Well, there's bike? the oh. kicker too. This is the most expensive bike here by a significant amount. Yeah, it's about ten thousand it? five hundred bucks. And, and then, then with, with the without the option, so uh, so four hundred more. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's what we've got 11, here is an eleven thousand dollar motorcycle, whereas yeah. the yeah. cheapest bike here, the Kawasaki, is just over seven grand. Right. Uh, that's yeah, a that's huge a big delta. Yeah. But I mean, and the same with the Honda on this one. Once you're in town, like he says, it's a pretty nice bike around town. Ex Suspension's pretty good. Except for the seat height, right? The seat height is more <laughs> like feels, an adventure bike. It's it kind of tall. It feels really tall. It's really tall. And I think I'm not, not only is it, it is the tallest seat height, but the bike's kind of wide at the gas mm -hmm. tank. So it makes it feel even taller. Mm -hmm. 
And it, it makes the most horsepower, peak horsepower, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. 80 something or other. Yeah, I don't, just under 85. I think. But uh, it kind of hunts and pecks a little bit. It, it's, it's, Get a little surging small, here and there. Smaller throttle openings. It's like a race bike. It wants to go. It wants you to open the throttle and go. And you get used to that. It's not a problem. But when you jump on an MTO center, it's just like, you just go. There's never any drama. You go as slow as fast as you want to. The motorcycle doesn't really much care. And I do think they probably has the most stable chassis. You know, just overall, it like, probably does. It's probably got the pretty quite a bit of trail compared mm -hmm. to it better. The, the the MTO sevens only got three and a half inches of trail, so it turns almost as instantly as the little Kawasaki does. Yeah, it's. I mean, whether you're leaned over or just cruising, it, it feels really stable. Whereas like bikes like the the mt07 and the kawasaki on some of the crappy roads Things that we've been riding on it when you're in a corner you just feel the, the thing. flexi flyer yeah, thing but that's kind on. of fun, fun at the same it, time you know when you're on a bike this this size yeah and i mean it, it is because you can just kind of manhandle it you know and you can deal with it but at the same time if you don't want that feeling of yeah. feeling like the bike is doing this as you're going through a corner the aprilia is definitely more stable in that regard i think the, the honda and the aprilia are both kind of like old school long steady yeah. And it's got cruise stability. control, so maybe if it's more stable and you want to go yeah. to touring, yeah. it's got a little more wind protection on it too. It comes down to how much do you want cruise control? Yeah, I love the cruise control. That's <laughs> the one. That's the one thing I I, I, I marked that one up on the technology score, just because it's got cruise. <laughs> I mean, what I get out of our top two here is it, it comes down to refinement, right? I mean, this Aprilia seems raw. It mm. seems kind of raw. And, but there's something to be said about constant refinement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you're talk talking about constant refinement who, and something that is just who better polished to mention, yeah, here then. An older established We think of John motorcycle Burns. company. <laughs> John motorcycle Burns. Motorcycle company, yeah, yeah, yeah. So John, you're sitting in the middle there. Why don't you tell us uh well, everyone should know by now who the top dog is in this group, but... Uh, I can't remember. What were the other five? The <laughs> Kawasaki, Suzuki, <laughs> SD650. is the dog of the bunch. And the, oh, the new Triumph Trident. There you Those go. Those guys have been in business a long time. Uh, I, I, I wrote the road test of it last month, I think. I thought, man, this thing's nice, but I didn't, I didn't really know. I think I got confused when, when I looked at the dyno chart too, like the raw one that the, the dyno spat out, because there's a big torque curve. I said, oh, that's got to be the Triumph. And then later when I looked closer, I saw it was the MT-07. <laughs> but um, that engine, the triple, the 660 triple in there, feels faster than what it looks like on the dyno chart to me. It's got the same kind of power as the MT, kind of big torquey mid-range. Yet it, um, it'll spin up to like, 10 or 11,000 and yes it's the only three cylinder in this yeah. test and yeah. that sound it makes is super cool it makes a great sound it's got power everywhere you want all the way up to redline yeah which it's, you kind of run into kind of quick when you're out here i mean i know for me within i don't know within 10 miles of riding the triumph i was like dang i think this bike's the one this thing is good yeah. it's really good I mean, really good power, really usable power, comfortable ergonomics. Yeah. You've got steel braided brake lines yeah, it's on got that thing. It's really good, lines. stops really well. You got that little display on the front there that doesn't it's seem round. initially. It looks old fashioned, kind of. Yeah, you wouldn't think it would show you all that much, but it's, it's got a lot of information, lot of information there. there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really got clear. Like almost yeah, that, that little display in the bottom gives you a lot of information. It's super clear. It looks really modern. Then you can get to do the Get Connected app or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Hook your phone up to it. Get navigation, turn-by-turn -turn navigation in there. It's, it's, it's the, one of the only ones with an inverted fork. I think the Honda has an upside-down fork, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's got that going for and it. The Aprilia. It's very stable and good suspension, even though it's like mostly non-adjustable like most of these bikes are. Uh, it, and it's priced right too. Eight thousand ninety-five dollars. Cheap, go. cheap. So that's the the engine that used to be in the in, in the street triple six seventy-five, right? So it's been it's been stroked down just a, a very little amount to get to six sixty. Then they've made a bunch of other changes to, to to make it torquier, to give it the characteristics it's got. And they made a they made a new steel frame, which is kind of like kind of like what all these bikes use. A lot less expensive than the aluminum perimeter one that the Street Triple used to have. Brings the price down. 
Uh, it's got a cool new plastic gas tank, which I think makes it look good, even though uh, a couple of us don't think this is its best paint scheme. There's, there's a few other Brian. paint <clears throat> schemes that you can get, but it's cool. There's no seam on bottom of that plastic tank. Looks a, a lot better to me. I mean, I know for me initially the looks weren't yeah. super impressive. And I thought to myself, man, if one of that head like, headlight looked different, then it would be a street triple. I realize the more we're riding these bikes around, the more I look at that Triumph, the more it's growing on me from the looks department. And mm -hmm. I, I really dig that Trident. It's a, it's a really good bike. It's a nice motorcycle, huh? You'd expect it. Triumph just builds good stuff these days. And uh, for it being 8,100 bucks too, it and the, and the MT-07 both come with Michelin Road 5 tires. Those are really good tires. I think that's what helps those two bikes kind of stand out a little bit too. Uh, but your, 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 your Aprilia's got good, uh, good, good Pirelli rubber on it mm -hmm. too. But mm -hmm. I think that makes a big difference in how, how these two handle, how these two feel. I rank them one two in my, my own personal. But uh, yeah, it triumphs a nice motorcycle. The motor is so sweet. I mean, I really don't like the styling of the thing. I do yeah. like it in the other both of the other colorways that, that mm -hmm. comes in. But I've purchased motorcycles that I didn't think were aesthetically pleasing because the riding experience was amazing. Which, that for me, I mean, as soon as you jump on it and you get into that motor, it's so much fun. It's fun out here, it's great around town, it's really smooth in both places, yeah. which I think it's the only one yep. that is as smooth, yeah. uh, kind of doing everything as it is. It's thick. It's low. It's plush. It's yeah, easy to touch the ground. Controlled. And uh, for the, the 8,095, we get an optional quick shifter on there, which brings it up and right with the Aprilia. That'd be awesome then. We, we've ridden that, that engine with a quick shifter. It's pretty sweet. I don't love the riding position out here for more aggressive riding because it is mu very much like, it almost seems like one of the most kind of sit up and beg riding positions. I, you know, sure. it's pretty close to the MT MT07, but I feel like the MT's uh, bars are a little lower and a little wider maybe, maybe a little wider, I don't know. Pretty close. It's not but the ideal corner carving motorcycle. Right. But it's There's really other good around, it's really yeah. good commuting, it's really good right. around town. And that's not bad out here. I just felt like when we were really, you know, kind of getting after it in some of these tighter roads, I wanted to get more weight over the front. You know, I had to like physically get myself kind of pushing down on it because the suspension, while it is good and it, it's kind of firm and sporty and feels, again, also feels good around town. I feel like the damping doesn't feel quite as refined as like the Honda or the Aprilia for me. So I didn't have a ton of confidence in that front end that didn't already didn't have much weight on it. Um, but I mean, that's, you know, I'm trying to pick nits on this bike because it's so good. Mm -hmm. It is a really stellar bike. And I think again, when you're talking about Triumph and their whole, you know, deal lately has been refinement. That every motorcycle that comes out has less inertia from cutting weight in the engines. And I was just noticing when we were doing some photography earlier today, throw it, like, hauling at, hauling easy, ass into easy. a corner. Watch it. <laughs> Language. You know, do when, when you roll off the gas, it kind of feels more free spinning, not two stroke like, but it feels more free spinning. You, you don't get as much uh, engine braking as definitely not as like the MT-07 or, or the SV. And it, it just, again, it's from the motor to the, LCD display to the crisp nice throttle like it is a very well refined motorcycle and the thing is it's not refined from a previous model it's brand it new it is, and it yeah. just you know they really hit it out of the park I think if I'm gonna moan about the Triumph there's one thing I don't like and you are. it's a really small thing but the passenger peg the bracket for it gets in the way of my foot when I'm riding around but they are removable they so are if removable. you're like troy and you don't have any off. friends don't you can friends. just pop them off that's right <laughs> <laughs> thank you for pointing that out ryan to the mrs entire troy is not going to be getting YouTube. on back of there so it's fine exactly Pull so i'm off. good i ride alone but other than that little thing that triumph is so cool it is such a good motorcycle nice package for but that i mean that also being said i thought about this too and it's we can pick really good things to say about all six of these motorcycles. Almost all six of them. I can't think of anything to say about your SD650. Yeah, me neither. Well, mine's 20 <laughs> years old, so don't worry about that one. But the new one's got a really good engine. Mm -hmm. so there's other things about it that maybe could be updated, but that engine is solid. It is. But, you know, for, for in all seriousness, any one of these six bikes, there are really good things to say about all of them. And we said it all.
And we've said most of them already. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you are looking at these six, thinking to yourself, oh man, they rated the SV Blast. And I was really looking at that bike. I like that bike a lot. It's a good bike. Yeah, I was just kidding. It's a good bike still. Yeah. You can probably find <laughs> a really good a really deal good on deal. it too. <laughs> <laughs> the beauty of it never being updated if you find a used one for like half the money. Well, we're getting into a whole different, different ball deal. Yeah, game yeah, yeah. there. Anyway. But it's our job though to put them together and see how they shake out against each other. And under those circumstances, when the cream has to rise to the top, got the Aprilia, you got the Yamaha, the Triumph. Yeah, these three stood out for me for very different reasons, but top of them all, that Triumph is just really, really good. Yeah, I think that I would have twisted the arms to make the MT-07 win if the Triumph didn't get here and upset the whole apple cart, because I think, <laughs> I think every comparison we put that Yamaha in over the years, it's come out on top a bunch of times ever since it was new in 2000. 12 or 13 or something, I believe. Something like that. It's, it's, it's always won and it's been, been dethroned at last. But the Triumph's great. But I think for the, I think the Triumph's for both broadband, for the most, the most, most uses, yeah. most versatile. I think the Yamaha is very close to it and very versatile. And if you want the racy one, then the Aprilia is it. Then maybe somebody will make a chip to get rid of the big flat spot. And then you're, <laughs> and then you're, and then you're in like Flynn. That's an old reference. It is an old reference. Yeah, pick the bike that you like the looks of the best or the one you can afford or the one who offers financing. Yeah. And yeah. if yeah, it's I a mean, Triumph, you'll be really happy. Hopefully what we've said is to help you, you know, figure out what, if you are only gonna use these bikes for commuting, then you know, maybe you don't want a bike that has Aprilia. no mid-range, you know? <laughs> it's just, hopefully we've helped to illustrate, you know, if you wanna do this X with your bike, this these are the ones that might be better. But yeah, overall there's, everything here has something to offer and uh, the triumph just happens to be the one that does it the most you know with the most versatility in in every scenario for 8095 for bucks 8100 so bucks cheap. those are going to be sold out those are going to be hard to find better get the because of this right video now. i think we covered everything we wanted to cover but there's going to be a written test too where you'll see the, the full specifications and the scorecard that tells everybody ranked each part of each bike and all that other kind of, the, the, the dyno chart will be posted there. There'll be beautiful photography by Evans Brassfield. So you want to check it at motorcycle.com. This was a fun one, boys. Good time. pretty fun. Now the sun's coming well, out, sun's too, because it's cold. And well, can, let's go ride some motorcycles some more. We're gonna sounds go like a ride, plan. ride home, shoot some more photos, and we're at it. We're done. Yeah, there are no losers here, except the SV, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, all good bikes. Well, well guys, if you like anyway, the video, like, said. comment, subscribe, <laughs> and thanks for watching. See you later.